All right, hello, welcome back. This is B-Ball Pro Insider, episode number 20. I am Candace Wiggins, let's get right to it. This episode is Talking Trends Part 3 and it's called Home Versus Away. So really with these talking trends, what I'm really trying to do is just pull some receipts so that it validates some of the claims that I make. But in this episode, this particular one, this one is really gonna be all about statistical evidence supporting a storyline. So even though I'm saying these things and it's coming from my point of view, there are also numbers here because men lie, women lie, but numbers do not lie, correct? So these are the receipts, you know, that really, like I said, are gonna support the storylines moving forward. This part three is home versus away scoring. So very straight to the point, all about production on the court, all about numbers, empirical evidence, nothing about my own personal point of view. This is really just about my claims being substantiated with statistics. After five games on the Western Conference Finals and four games on the Eastern Conference Finals, that to me is enough of a substantial um, amount of statistics to really validate, like I said, uh, what I'm talking about here. So. We're really gonna just take a look. I pulled uh, stats from basically what who I identified as key players, but obviously things have changed a little bit with some of the injuries happening um, specifically on the Eastern Conference. Just looked at their home versus away production. Let me also clarify that I was never really a statistics person, especially when I played, because my statistics when I played as a player did not tell an accurate story at all of what happened. And I think it's the same thing with the NBA. I don't think that the, the stats really tell the entire story because there's just so many things and so many factors that stats cannot measure. But at the same time, they do show a trend. So, you know, it could be just a very basic general idea. And that's where, what I'm taking. I'm not gonna be over analyzing these statistics because I never felt like that was conducive to the real story of, the, of what's really happening. Okay. So from the Clippers, the Bucks, the Hawks and the Suns, I took top four to five players um, and really um, analyzed how they score on the road versus how they score at home. And um, I think that, you know, it really showed a lot and it really made things kind of clear and simple. So I'm going to try to simplify what I took from the statistics as simple as possible. And I'm going to start with saying this, this is the not so hot, hot take that I had a revelation um, watching last night which was the winner of the NBA 2021 NBA Finals is gonna come from the Western Conference. That's just kind of how I feel, um, especially after, you know, like I said, watching both conferences, I just feel like this is 2018 all over again, you know, where it's like, good job East, but you're gonna lose to the West. So in that same regard, it's still important though to see who is going to be the champion on the Eastern Conference. So I'm gonna take and analyze the Milwaukee Bucks and the Atlanta Hawks first, and then we'll dive into the Suns and the Clippers, who I feel like is going to just be, you know, the showdown of, of the ages. Okay, so with discussing this Hawks versus Bucks uh, matchup, which has changed completely, injuries have changed the entire dynamic because of all the changes, and things of that nature. I really feel like it's psychological warfare now. It's really just a mental game. It's about who's mentally tougher because, you know, physically they're both, um, you know, took some huge hits to their ingredients, to their personnel. So really it's just about who has more fortitude, you know, who wants to keep playing with each other for each other moving forward. And, you know, there's an equal case to be made for both. The one thing that I feel like is in the Bucks' favor, the only thing now that's in their favor is home court advantage that they were able to take back in game three. So with that in mind, you know, I really looked at the players and, um, you know, how they play versus home versus away. Now, the interesting thing about both teams, about both the Hawks and the Bucks, is that for the most part, statistically, they're about the same. They pr their production on the road versus at home is pretty much the same for most of the players. In fact, for the Hawks, it's really, there's really no drop off. There's no difference home versus away. You know, no big differences. The Bucks is a little bit of a different story and I'll get to that, but I wanna start with the Hawks first. Obviously, Trey Young's ankle now, um, it's a bone bruise and I'm not sure if he's gonna play or not. Um, you always wanna assume, I assume that the player is going to play. So um, I included Trey Young into the calculations, but if he doesn't play, 
that is you know going to be a huge factor going forward not just for this series but again overall in the final yeah. knowing trey young who is now affectionately called bay young by me bay young number 11 uh trey is bay and but i really am hoping that he you know his injury isn't too serious or that he's able to play again because you know he's just he's really it for the hawks in terms of you know um just their leader and um it's and it's going to be very unfortunate if he can't play continuing but you know trey young was you know his uh production on the road at home was a standard it was a standard of excellence because there was no drop off better at home but he is there's no drop off he is incredible as you saw 48 points in game one blew my mind you know i had to just you know blow him a kiss for that because it was just phenomenal and you know, when I say things like, you know, Colin Bay Young number 11, that is really a little tongue in cheek because, you know, it's really just a matter of me just falling in love with his game and falling in love with just the way that he plays and the way that he approaches his toughness, his fortitude. So Bay Young, Trey, Bay Young number 11, you know, I, I see you and um, I just really, you know, I'm going to be praying for you for sure that you get healthy and that you get back into this series, okay? So the players that I checked into were Kevin Herter, Danilo Gallinari, John Collins. Now that Trey Young is hurt, Lou Williams started in his place, so I was tracking Lou Williams' stats because I feel like he's the key, and I'll get into that in a second, but Lou Williams is the player that you have to circle if you want to understand this series and what this series is gonna be all about. It's all about Lou Williams. It's all about Lou Williams from this point forward. Also, two key players to note are Bogdan Bogdanovich and Cam Reddish. So those are the key X factors, but the number one key X factor, the leader of that group is Lou Williams, okay? And like I said, all of these players that I mentioned, they have not had a drop off. Um, their production is pretty much the same. There's no really determining like, whoa, where it just stands out and, and shocks you. But Lou Williams is particularly good at home. He's been playing really well at home. You know, he's shooting 67% at home in Atlanta and he's shooting 27% in Milwaukee. Now, of course that can change with more time, more shot selections, but I think that's gonna be the key in looking at game five and analyzing game five is basically Lou Williams's production on the road. So that's gonna be the key for Atlanta because other than that, they've been having a lot of consistency from their players. So there's not, and then obviously those two players that I mentioned, you know, Bogdan Bogdanovich was injured, but he's been playing really well as of late. And also Cam Reddish, who's back from his injury. And he has been steadily giving them numbers, production, but the biggest key, like I said, is gonna be how they play on the road because there has been some sort of a uh, shift not necessarily with the Hawks, because the Hawks have been consistent, but with the Bucks. The Bucks are a totally different situation. So we're gonna get to that next. Now with talking about the Bucks and the psychological warfare that's going on. Giannis Antetokounmpo being injured is devastating. It's devastating as a casual watcher. It's devastating if you're a if you're a Milwaukee Bucks fan. It is so devastating, you know. And it's just, I, but at the same time, you know. The series has to go forward so you have to move forward and you have to you know um it's about fortitude it's about being able next man up every single team has dealt with this and now it's just milwaukee's turn to deal with it um Giannis has been playing out of his mind amazing consistent there is no drop off home versus away for Giannis. he is in fact um his production was better on the road. You know, he was shooting 58% home and 64% on the road. So he was doing really well on the road. Um, his free throw percentages are much better, obviously, at home. They uh, have two key players who have been impacted that perform better home versus away. And they actually are reverse in, in how they, in their production. And those two key players are Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday. Uh, Chris Middleton statistically performs better on the road and it's substantial. It's as substantial as 33% at home versus 48% on the road he is shooting. So he's shooting so much better on the road and Drew Holiday is the exact opposite. He's shooting 60% at home and 28% on the road. So you've got two players who are performing better in different locations and they're now the key that have to step up in the absence of Giannis if he is absent. Um, not, we're not sure it's all day to day, so we will see tomorrow. Bobby Portis and 
Brooke Lopez, they're pretty much the same home versus away. They're also not really phased. It's really those two players, Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday, that are very, very, you know, substantially have different statistics home versus And away. also the three keys for the Hawks to consider are PJ Tucker, Pat Connaughton, and Bryn Forbes. Those players, you know, they're kind of, they're X factors, just like the guys in Atlanta have X factors as well. So basically what I think it comes down to is in this psychological warfare now, it's basically Lou Williams production versus Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday's production, you know, and um, both the teams are without their star. Um, I think that the Bucks obviously have a huge vacancy to fill with Giannis being absent rather than the Hawks having Trey Young absent. I think that is that is huge. That could be a determining factor. That could be the number one determining factor. But at the end of the day, the players have to play and the Bucks do have home court advantage helping them. But if players like Chris Middleton do not have production at home, then it's pretty much, you know, um, kind of a guarantee that the Hawks, because the Hawks are so consistent, home versus away. So it's really gonna just be a matter of how strong and solid does home court advantage take the Bucks. So the receipts for the Eastern Conference, those are the stats that really stand out. And I think that that's gonna really shape the story moving forward. Obviously we will see where it ends up, but at the end of the day, like I said, you know, it, to me, um, it's one of those things where, you know, it, it matters, but it's a little bit of a roller coaster of redundancy because of how strong these Western Conference teams are. So with that said, let's get to the Western Conference. All right, so now for the wild, wild west. This is where it gets really good because like I said, I'm a strong believer that whoever wins the West is gonna win it all. So these are our high stakes. This is 2018 Western Conference Finals all over again. A familiar specific character in Chris Paul. So this is like the 2018 all over again, but with Chris Paul able to have some redemption. But obviously the teams are different. It's the Suns versus the Clippers. And basically the storyline, the statistical storyline supports this too. The storyline that I see is Suns in six or Clippers in seven. So when I mentioned earlier, I mentioned in the last episode how it's a coin flip. If you ask me who wins heads or tails, you know, it's like heads, Clippers, tails, Suns. It really is that. But I think now it's a little bit more specific and it's Suns and six. If the Suns win, I think they're gonna win game six tonight. Um, if they do not win game six tonight, they are really up against the wall against, you know, a very, very difficult Clippers team that is not a guarantee, nothing's a guarantee, but it could you could strongly support Clippers in seven. Let's take Paul George, he's their leader. He is shooting so significantly better on the road. He's shooting 30% at home and 54% on the road, okay? 20% from three at home, 38% from three on the road. You know, even his free throws, 72% at home, 77% on the road. So Paul George is just very, very, very good on the road. Reggie Jackson is the same. He's shooting 43% at home and 52% on the road. You know, um, three pointers, 29% at home, 43% on the road. So these two guys who are the engine that gets Clippers going are both better on the road. Now, obviously things can change in game six. They can explode, but the trends have been that they've been better on the road than they've been at home for whatever reason. And then, like I said, Marcus Morris Sr., he's been pretty consistent and so has Terrence Mann. You know, their numbers are pretty consistent. Terrence Mann plays slightly better at home. He's shooting 60% at home, 41% on the road. Basically, the question comes down to tonight is, you know, how well can Paul George and Reggie Jackson play at home? Because that might be their only hope to continue their season and to get the game to go, the series to go to seven. Okay, now speaking about the Suns, you know, the Suns are statistically significantly better at home. So that makes, you know, this series very interesting because unlike the Clippers, their best players play better at home. And it starts with, you know, Devin Booker. So the key is Devin Booker, but it's also DeAndre Ayton and Chris Paul. All of these players play better at home than they do away. For Devin, his numbers are, it's pretty significant. At home, he's shooting 43%. On the road, he's shooting 30%. Um, three pointers is where you really see the big difference with Devin Booker. He's shooting 50% at home from three and 8% on the road. 
So that is a huge drop off. And obviously he's an excellent free throw shooter. DeAndre Ayton is also shooting better at home than he is away, but he's still very significantly solid. He's 71% home, 63% on the road. And, um, you know, so it's pretty much the same, um, but just a little bit higher uh, production at home. And then Chris Paul is also very significantly different. He's shooting 42% at home and 27% on the road. So again, and then three pointers, you know, he's just, it's, yeah, we're not gonna talk about three pointers. So I also added Cameron Payne and Cameron Johnson to the list. Uh, just to give a little bit of more depth because, you know, the Suns are really relying on a lot of players, next man standing up. Cameron Payne in particular, he stepped in in Chris Paul's absence. It was just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And even he shoots better at home than he does on the road. At home, he was shooting 48% and on the road, he's shooting 25%. How they use Cameron Payne going forward is going to be key. I believe that he was one of the factors that really helped um, the Suns succeed especially like i said in chris paul's absence and then finally cameron johnson such a key ingredient i mean he is just shooting lights out but even he has a big difference in how he's scoring his production at home versus on the road at home cameron johnson is shooting basically 80 percent at home and he is 54 percent on the road though so that's a huge difference between home versus away so basically what this means is that you know this this really supports sons and six because of how much different the key players for the Clippers, Paul George and Reggie Jackson, how they shoot at home. They're not very productive at home statistically. And um, so this would be their opportunity. This would be the Suns opportunity because even though the Suns shoot really well at home, they shoot better at home, the Clippers are substantially better on the road. And so, you know, this obviously could go either way. It could be the Suns in seven or the, you know, the Clippers could win game six. I really feel like these statistical numbers really support, you know, the Suns best shot at beating the Clippers is definitely gonna be in six games. They do really do not wanna play, you know, that gambling game, guessing game of how the Clippers, how hot they can get on the road because, you know, the Clippers, it's like they, they love playing in Phoenix Suns arena, which is not a good thing for the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, the statistics, one thing that was shocking, because nothing was really shocking, it all really kind of supports where the series has been going, but the one thing that was shocking to me was seeing that DeAndre Ayton had only shot five free throws in the entire series. The free throw shooting of DeAndre Ayton is gonna be something to look for, because he is such a huge presence for the, for the Suns. He is so important to, you know, their production in the paint. And the fact that, you know, I feel like free throws really measures when you're looking at all these statistics, you can see the players who get to the free throw line consistently. And it was just a little bit of a shock to see that, you know, the player who is so, such a focus on the inside, on the interior, not getting a lot of free throws. You know, that to me tells me a little bit something about the physicality aspect. And I think that, you know, that definitely favors the Clippers. So it's something to really look for to see how many times can DeAndre Ayton really exploit that you know, um, matchup, a mismatch of, you know, his size and his height advantage, you know, really exploiting that um, through free throws. Okay, so with all that said, Clippers in seven or Suns in six, we are going to finish off this episode by doing a coin flip. So we've got heads and tails. We're gonna say heads is gonna be Suns in six, tails, Clippers in seven. So. This is how much, this is how I feel about statistics. Like I said, I try not to read into it too much, but these storylines really are supported by the statistical evidence there. So it's very interesting to see that, but at the end of the day, it's a coin flip conference. Tails, Clippers and seven, done. And of course I wanted the series to go to seven anyway. So that would be a great um, um, result. But at the end of the day, like I said, these guys have to play. This is game six. Um, probably the biggest game of the entire um, playoffs. And it's also very interesting because Chris Paul is in the same situation that he was in 2018, his team up three to two. But unfortunately, Chris Paul had an injury. This year he doesn't. So is this gonna be a redemption you know, uh, situation for, for Chris? I, I hope so, and I'm definitely rooting for him. And I also just think that there's just so much you know, to, to talk about with both teams. So we'll see who gets to the finish line 
and um, you know who finishes out the series. But again, like I said, I think that whoever wins in the West is gonna win it all. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.